What's up guys? Today I got a really cool video for y'all. Um, we're at a pretty cool place that I think you're gonna like. Right there. We're at Trebus Tools Headquarters here in Englewood, Ohio. And today we're gonna take you inside, let you meet the guys and check out what they got going on. So you guys, come on. All right guys, so we're inside Trebus's facility here in Englewood and this is Mr. Kendall and he's the CEO of Trebus and he's going to take care of you guys today. Yeah, let's take a tour, see what our place is all about. Sounds great. So just coming on in here, you know, this is this is kind of the history of Trebus to be honest. There's so much, so much love you could say about what goes on in this case from, you know, the first to the end. And really, you know, this is, this is, really where it's at you know with with all this with uh really the trebus tools and the involvement that we have the one thing we don't have in here is the o2 sensor but uh but we'll get there for sure um you know a lot of just parts and pieces and r d stuff you know figuring stuff out i mean literally the first box of trebus you know like this is the one that they brought to say hey do you like this are you ready you know to use this i mean it's just it's amazing to think about what's in here you know the I mean, these literally were used for investor presentations, you know, the, just the handles when we were figuring stuff out. I mean, different iterations and I mean, we were making it right and we were like, oh, that's just, it's, it's not like, it doesn't feel good enough, you know? So we just change it and we move on to the next one and this one just felt so good. And I mean, then we put it into production, you know, it's just so interesting to look at this cabinet and just say, man, like this is our history, you know, it's really cool. Yep. That is pretty neat. So, I mean, just simple stuff, right? Like this just got dropped off today. You know, these are ratchets that are going in, in, uh, in to the, into the wrenches, you know? So, I mean, it got dropped off today by somebody, I'm guessing a courier. I mean, we have people that just handle these logistical things and we have a couple people out It's the end of the day. So we have a couple people out right now, but, uh, you know, like we're, we're probably wrapping up the day here as Clay came in, but, uh, Let's just move back here and I'll show you some cool stuff. You know, offices and office people. Here's Peter. Peter's assembling wrenches. He's got orders and stuff that have to go out. So he's finishing up a few sets um, that have to go out today. So you can look at the parts and pieces that he's working with. Wow. You got your work cut out for you, don't you? Sure do. Yeah, he's That's got a, a bunch of stuff, stuff going on. So he just had Paul, he just had shoulder bolts that he's been waiting on. Just show up today to finish out wrenches. You know, he's doing O2 stuff. He's got sets going on. Um, I mean, it's so just he's, awesome to look at. He's assembling the line wrenches now? Uh, right now I'm assembling the O2 wrenches for okay. O2 sensors. Yeah. Cool. So both orders that were ready to go are put in stock on shelf. Yeah. I mean, it keeps everything nice and organized. I mean, he's able to go through like literally every size, you know, has the different parts and pieces. Everything's in its own transitional stage. Like he tries to stay as organized as possible. So Peter's a huge part of our team. That's awesome. So, so yeah, he, he's the guy that puts his hands on every every wrench, every single wrench, every wrench. Every he wrench. has he's the last line of defense before they come out. So if a guy buys a Trebus tool, he, he put for it together. sure one hundred percent. It was either him or somebody else. <laughs> if we got a bunch of orders, he'll pull in other people that'll help him. But that is cool. Yeah, for sure. That's so. cool. The only bad thing about that, he can't blame it on anybody. I know, else. right? <laughs> Peter's. That's right. That's so it's, right. It's all on you, Peter. That's right. So all this stuff, like everything's in transition, right? Like, either waiting to be assembled or waiting to go out. We just sent out a big shipment. Um, I'm not sure if they picked it up yet, so we might be able to see it. But I mean, we got handles, heads, you know, shoulder bolt, like all of the different parts and pieces. So are this here. is pretty much every single piece. Yeah, to for every size, like everything's marked of where it is, where it's going, you know, wow. heads, the ratchets, the handles. So when you're calling those ratchets, show everybody what, Yeah. like when, when we normal guys hear the word ratchet, they're thinking of, of like you know, the, the actual, ratchet, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So this is the in, internal piece you could say, came back with the snap ring on it that you'll see in your wrench because they actually hang it from the snap ring. Right. when they're putting the coating on it. It's called a DLC coating, and that stands for diamond-like uh, carbon. Um, so that is what requires, or that's what sets your wrench apart. They don't oh, have absolutely. to be oiled. Yeah, exactly. They, they run better dry. Yep, 
not only that, but like the diamond light carbon, like it goes on our poles as well. So we're able to see like less wear and tear on the wrenches because those are our moving parts. Right. So we do a special coating for that. Now, what is the coating that you use like on the Yeah, handles? so the, it's a black nitrite is what we call it. Um, once again, an Ohio company, just a few hours away from us. Uh, black nitrite, it changes the surface of the metal. Um, so you're, you're, once again, we're talking about wear, we're talking about rust. Mm -hmm. We're trying to prevent all those things, right? So that's what we're doing. We literally do that on all the heads, the handles, the shoulder bolts, the whole wrench. So is that something similar to like what would be on an AR-15? Yeah, absolutely. It's the exact same thing. Yep, absolutely. So you build them tough. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you bet. Um, we have a lot of tooling stuff here. You know, this is, this is really the machine where we house all of the tooling that cuts the steel. Um, you enter like what, what tool you need. It's housed in here, so you enter what it is, and the drawer automatically pops out. The thing opens up, so you're not like confusing things. Right. We actually don't organize this ourselves. Our tooling guy that we buy everything from, um, he comes in through this door, and like all orders and tooling and everything goes through him. If we use it, he gets notified to put it on the list of things to order. That's so cool. it's just an automatic process. It's pretty neat. Let me show you just kind of some of the machines and stuff that we use. Um, we've got tool holders and stuff that are holding the tools to cut steel. <clears throat> so it's this kind of cool, like just the way that stuff is organized. This is the metric side, you know, so all of our from all of our sizes from 16 millimeter right now up to 21. And then we're expanding that obviously to our smaller sizes. We'll go down to 10 millimeter. Then the other side is standard. So we'll go from three eighths to one inch eventually as cool. we get up there. So the ratchets that I was talking about, these are this is what machine that makes them. So, so that's these, pre DLC coated. There. That is correct. Yeah, this is 100% just fresh off of the off of the machine. Um, it goes from here, and then we'll, I'll show you the deburring where we polish it, and uh, and uh, and we debur it and everything. So it goes through two different processes. Okay. Um, so it's so on an automatic. each one of those, I'm assuming, are, are different sizes. So yeah, if you so, have like 12 different wrenches, yeah, it's exactly. 12 different and like processes. And we're, we're trying to do the best way with manufacturing. So like we'll make one head, like let's say this, so let's say uh, the three-quarter inch head. Three-quarter inch head actually has three different sizes that fit inside that head. The only thing that changes is the actual ratchet. Okay. So three quarter, you make a three-quarter inch head and you'll have three different sizes. So. The heads are made over there and I'll show you, but when we're running ratchets, like we're running um, right here. So every single piece of of your tool is made here. Oh yeah, right here in, in, this, yeah, in this building, absolutely. Cool. So this is how the material comes in for the ratchets. It's a four foot bar, it goes in a bar feeder, um, and then it goes through the process of being machined and everything. And like, like I showed you over here, you know, this is, this is how they come out, you know, goes from the raw stock to being our parts. Wow. Yep. That's pretty amazing. So how many, um, how many different sizes does that machine actually cut for the All of them. Heads? So like we'll eventually have the 22 different line wrench sizes, but then it also cuts the ER line of wrenches as well as the O2 sensors, both the 7 8 and the 15 16 Cool. So, yeah, this, that's what this one does right now. And then the other one, it's doing handles right now, but we'll eventually do the same thing with doing ratchets and we'll bring in more machinery to produce more. So, do you wanna go over here? Sure. And I'll show you. <clears throat> that's pretty cool right yeah, there. Yeah, so this is, our, this is our handle machine. It does the handles and the extensions for the O2 stuff. As you can see, we have our conveyor. Same thing, it's got a bar feeder, so you're cutting it out of the four foot bar. And once again, like it just does its thing, comes down here, gets on the conveyor. That way it can run for as long as you, I mean, honestly, it runs overnight in all reality, and it'll do a whole bar or multiple bars. As you can see, come over here for so a second. So that one machine cuts it, uh, pretty much turns it down on yeah, the lathe, threads it. And you can see like this bar feeder, it's already stacked with about 20 bars. Well, maybe 15 bars. Right. But it's stacked. Like this thing will just run as long as this thing is full of bars. It'll just keep producing parts. We have tool checks where it's checking tools and making sure that it's done right. 
And then, well, like, right now, like, it just ended a shift because it's the end of the day. So, it, I mean, it ran probably through that whole bar feeder and filled this thing up. So, like, with this right here, you mentioned, like, the quality checks. What do y'all, like, so, throughout the day, so many out of each batch? Yeah, or? so throughout the day, we have our quality checks. We have a quality room that we actually go and check every single part in. These get checked to make sure that they can screw into the extensions, make sure the length is right, make sure the knurling is right, everything. Every single part of that wrench gets checked. That's awesome. Or that handle or extension gets checked. So this is our laser. We do two different operations. So one, so you see how these ones are blank. We do two different things. So like we, before stuff goes to final finishing, we'll laser it and then when it comes back, we'll laser it as well because we want it to be white. So like, here's a perfect example. <clears throat> this was lasered before and then this is lasered after. Actually, that might be before too. This is on an old style wrench, but perfect, so perfect it, wrench. That's how you guys get on the new style where it's got the white, like seven eighths or 22. Yeah, if it's white, like it was lasered after. So it's not paint then, that's, that's there. It's what? It's not a paint, that's there. No, then. it's lasered, yeah, you're not taking it off. Um, every head, in fact, let me show you the heads first and then we'll go to this. This is Mike, Mr. Mike. Yes, sir. Mike makes all of our heads. Tell us, uh, so he's got, he's got O2 sensor wrenches going right now. The way that it works is this is called a pallet. He's got the raw material that he cuts on the saw, the automatic saw over there. And he always has two pallets going. So he's loading this one up, having it perfect and ready to go. He's about to end a shift for the day, shift for the day. And uh, you can see in here actually, he's got eight of them that are done. So this just finished, and wow. he's set up and ready to go for tomorrow. So he can take that off the machine um, and be able to just put this one on within a couple minutes. He checks it, makes sure that everything is right, pulls those heads off, and then they'll go over to the grinder. So cool. Mike's awesome. So he cuts. Heck yeah, one man. guy does all the heads? One guy does all the heads. Eventually what we'll do is we'll implement this guy. This is a pallet um, changing system, and this is the pallet. So this system will actually move the different pallets in between the different machines, doing different sizes, different heads, like keeping the machines running all the time. Well, I know you guys make a lot of wrenches, and I know, Mike, you probably need that because you guys have got a lot of wrenches <laughs> around yeah. here. He's, he's hustling right now. Oh, so yeah. He's the we, hardest working guy we, here. Oh, I definitely we, believe so. <laughs> we got we to gotta get this thing going for him so that he can uh, sit back in a lawn chair and there be going. Go. He deserves it. Yeah, he does. There you go, buddy. He's touched a lot of wrench heads, that's for sure. So once he makes them on this machine, he comes over here, and the only thing that has to be done is this little burr. This gets cut off the machine, and it just has to be ground. So he puts it on this table. It's on a magnet system, and it just moves back and forth. So this is always running. Like I said, it's the end of the shift here. So normally he would have this running at the same time as his machines and just keep things running and stuff. So like kind of in the woodworking world, that would be sort of like a planer? Sure, yeah, okay. you can consider it the same thing, for sure. So, pretty good system. Oh, I mean, one-off parts off the machine, a little bit of grinding. What does it take, like if you were to calculate it per grinding of heads, how long does it take for a minute? Yeah. Maybe, Probably. if that. Yeah, and then he's ready, and then they're ready to go. So. Can we get a lot better finish than doing it by hand. Oh my goodness. For sure, and, and multiple ops. Like we used to do it multiple ops and we figured out a way to be able to do it in one op, which saves us so much time and money, it's not even funny. So this is just where we store some of the material and stuff. We have a lot of racks like this. You know, this is specific to the handle machine. You know, we're, we're recycling all of our chips and everything that we're doing. Right. Everything goes to uh, one of our companies here in, in Spokane. Great company to work with. You know, obviously we always get money back for recycling, you know, doing good stuff like that. So let's go, um, I can show you the shipping department, just because we're over here. <clears throat> so this is where like everything happens for, uh, for what we're doing. As you can see, like, I mean, we're setting up, getting ready, you know, to ship out parts. It looks like extensions are done. These are probably orders that are in process. I mean, you could see the amount of O2 stuff that's ready to go. Holy cow. How, many, mean, how many do you think sitting on that rack right I there? I don't even know. I that's mean, a, that's a lot. 
What have we got? Probably 10 on each side. You got more than maybe a couple hundred, I guess. That's awesome. Um, probably just getting ready, you know, for orders and stuff like that. And then uh, we've got the full line. You know, that's what Peter was working on. He's got some sets that are going out and stuff, and they'll go, you know, our foam inserts. And, right. you know, just, I mean, these boxes, these inserts, you know, everything is right here in Ohio. We have local partners, gave us incredible pricing to get us started, and have just helped us. I mean, even this stuff, like this stuff was designed, this is to hold the heads as they go out for final finishing or as they're in the process. You right. know, this was made by the same people that are making our boxes and inserts and everything. So not only is every single piece of your wrench made here, but the, but all the, the plastic, the foam, literally the everything cardboard box. Is like American. Everything. Even this. We just got these designed. Oh, even the blow molded. Even paint. the blow molded. This holds the O2 sensor wrench. These come from Massachusetts. Wow. We just got, I mean, this whole box. I mean, check this out. Like, this is amazing. These guys gave us an incredible deal. You know, you see all of them just coming in. That's what this pallet is, is they finished so up the I job. Know, you know, you're the CEO. Yep. And to everybody that buys tools, that's important to be made in America. It is. It's important and, to me. And it has to be some pressure on you for the cost because obviously you could have got those plastic inserts made much cheaper sure. by outsourcing them across the pond. Sure. But like it's you guys ring true. Well, and that's why you see where our, our prices are where they are, right? Like it's important for us to be American made. And so we're trying to find the right partners. I know that I could have gone to, you know, somewhere else to get these, but the, like we launched this O2 thing, this O2 sensor wrench and it took off so fast. I needed somebody to do it quickly for me. <laughs> so I called around. I asked a couple of people that I knew. I was like, do you know anybody that's doing this kind of work? And they were like, you got to call K&K. &K. Cool. And I was like, all right. That's awesome that you're also supporting another, you know, business for here. Sure. You Absolutely. Know. It's for, they, they killed it for us. I will continue to use them in the future for sure. That's awesome. Let's go this way. I'll show you the other side of the shop. So how long have you guys been here? So we moved in in uh, April of... 2019 I guess it would be so it's been a lot of work to be honest in the last you know year and a half right. really um, to get there you know we got break rooms and stuff for the guys um, going through kind of a transition over here you know just getting everything really set up and dialed in the way we want um, every pawl and every ratchet that you see let me find something for you so yeah this is, this stuff is in process right this came off this machine this is the ratchet has to be to bird first so all the little you know sharp edges and everything like they go in this centrifugal machine um, we've got the bins that you put them in so the bins themselves spin and then the whole thing spins wow so you're about i think it's so it i don't like know how many g's i think it's like 4g yeah it is so it's just like this right here so it's two different things for our polishing and stuff we use these little ceramic beads for all of the all the ratchet stuff and then for uh all the paws i mean it's just nails just little nails wow takes That's off cool. all the paws and everything so so like there's no part of this no ratchet. i mean who would have known a year and a half ago when we started that in order to get the burrs off of one of our parts we had to put it in this typical machine with nails. Little nails. That's <laughs> crazy. We went back and forth with the company like, we don't know how to do this. Like, show us like the best way to do this. And we sent them parts and they did their thing and sent them back and said, we think this will work. And That's I think we awesome. did it about four times before we got like the actual mixture dialed in. <laughs> it was pretty crazy. This is our... Uh, this is our automatic saw. So like, we'll set material on here. Um, you set the like size that you're doing and everything and it just, literally just drops it into the bucket. These so are for O2 the, sensor engines. So that those are, seen on yeah. that carousel. So this thing. is literally how those heads start um, in the process of being manufactured. So wow. Mike will take this. He probably cut these parts actually. He'll take this and go put it on his pallets and start the that's process. That's a lot of material to have to cut off It of is. There. Yep. Like, that's got to take some time to just do Just a couple that. minutes actually. It's really? really not too long. That's awesome. Just a couple minutes. Um, let's go to this machine. <coughs> I mean, we got 
staging areas for our different parts and pieces. All stuff coming in and getting finished, O2 stuff. I mean, check this out. So these are Paul's that just came off. This is our Swiss machine that we use. You know, this is what I'm talking about. This stuff needs to bird, right? So we put it in that machine to be the bird with the nails and we're good to go. This probably took, I don't know, maybe a day to be able to do that many parts. I mean, it's impressive how fast this thing wow. is. That's some tiny little tiny little teeth. that that has to do. We do it with custom tools and custom, just custom everything because we're making wrenches. So y'all had thing, a special, have this machine special built? Not special built, but the actual tooling for it, like that cuts the steel, those tools are actually custom. That's cool. So we went through a long design process to make sure that they were absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. And then we just order a bunch of them so we don't ever run out. That's awesome. So they're so checking what stuff. All, that machine just cuts the paws. So we got paws. We've got, uh, we got shoulder bolts. Even the bolts that were literally like screwing the handles and the heads together. The shoulder bolts we're making on our own Swiss. Wow. <coughs> and so then, this uh, machine cuts those bolts too? <coughs> yep, the whole thing. And then the Paul plugs that are oh, in the wrench. The, that's the ones that cover the side. That cover the side yeah. that hold the spring in. This right. gets cut on the same machine. I mean, yeah. we're literally talking that thing right there takes about two seconds to make. Wow. You know, this uh, shoulder bolt takes about, you know, 19 seconds, you know, at the most. Right. And we're running, you know, pretty much 24-7. That's um, awesome. They'll set this up before they leave today, and we'll be rocking and rolling. So, so that thing will work all night. Oh, yeah. This is the bar feeder. It's the same thing. It's just a 12-foot. You know, you can see the bars that we, get, that we put on it, and it just right. continues to rock and roll. Right now, this machine is ahead of everything else. So they may be focusing on other things while this thing's going. Okay. So. So well, this, is... this actually is a pretty awesome day. So this pallet signifies a big thing for Trevis. This is the most parts that we've ever sent out. There are literally thousands of parts and pieces on this pallet. When you say sent out, are you talking about like the sold? final finishing? Oh, to send yeah. To get so the we're sending them out to be it? final finished. Okay. <coughs> With all of our sales channels and everything, like once these come back, like we'll have developed relationships with people or online sales or whatever, where we'll get this stuff immediately put together, get on the shelf and sent out the door. You guys are really growing fast. We are. Aren't you? It's really awesome. So let me let me show you the quality room. I wanted to introduce you to Austin. I'm okay. show you the kind of quality checks that we do. <clears throat> well, I hope Corey's here. Oh, yeah. I, we I want to get him on camera because, like, I'm going to put you guys on the spot here in a minute. Uh-oh. That's scary. Because I kind of heard a little leak, a little rumor. Oh, yeah? A little something cool that I think is kind of neat. I'm, I'm going to kind of put you guys on the spot. All right. I like it. Austin. This is our guy, Austin. He runs all the pawls, the ratchets, the shoulder bolts, the, the paw plugs. And on the pawls, he actually uses this machine called a contracer. And, uh, and he checks literally every single tooth on the paw to make wow. sure that it's correct before it leaves. That's pretty so, cool. So quality checks are the mo one of the most important things for us. As you can see, like we're doing checks on other things, heads. Um, that's actually a magnet. I better not touch that. Um, our ratchets, you know, this thing will come in and do all of its checks and everything. So, is it like a random check, or do you guys no. like? No. What do you What do you so check in Austin? Times? Every hundred parts. So this is the first part check before I set up the machine. Um, all right, hang on one second. You You wouldn't mind. So, so let me get over here where you can talk. This is a first part check before I run the actual work order. Um, after that, I'll be doing fifty parts until I'm sure nothing's going to move with the temperature or anything like that and then after that every hundred parts they get traced perfect yeah so if anything these... changes or adjusts like he's gotta he's gotta make sure that he makes those adjustments so so he's the guy that sort of everything's kind of riding on his shoulders to make, <laughs> make sure, sure those right. machines are doing yeah right, that's so. exactly right so all the guys like do their checks, but like the Pauls are one of, you know, that's where our technology comes in, right. you know, so 
he's our he's one of our lines of defense you know there to make sure that everything's made right well austin you're doing a good job <laughs> because i love the o2 sensor wrench like <laughs> it's awesome it's isn't awesome it? it's awesome because it's, of what austin does it's awesome for sure yep so let's go down here um let me just uh let's see if corey's down here actually as you can see it's the end of the day so yeah everybody's kind of winding up I'm sorry about that no you're fine this is the war room this is where all the decisions get made corey arnold our vp of sales how are you corey is that mr clay Coon? that is me Man. he said he was going to put us on the spot for something i'm a little nervous what it is <laughs> all right so so you're you're not going to be on mic but i think maybe you can talk a little louder um you want me to give him mine? No, no, you're good. Oh, okay. Because I, I need your voice oh, okay. too, okay? So I understand that you guys, and you may tell me, no, you got to cut this out <laughs> of the video. But We're pretty bad at saying no, but okay, go ahead. Like, I understand that you had a customer, and I mentioned to you about a certain product. Yeah. And I, I told you I think there's a demand for this, and I think it'd be a need for it. And you, Thank you had another customer, um, I, I guess a, a, a guy that sells a lot of your wrenches. I know what this, I know where this is going. So I know where this like, is going. I received a text, and the guy's like, "They made it in a day." <laughs> so, and you may not want me to leak this, but I mean, if you don't, just no, tell it's me, okay. You want to leak so. it? Sure, you want to tell everybody? Sure. All right, here it is. The very first 1516s O2 sensor wrench of Trebus Tools. Um, the other day we were we had a break actually between sizes. We were changing over machinery and stuff, and we got that text you know from one of Corey's dealers that said, "Hey, we really need this." And it was like, you know what? Let's just try it. And so we we busted off a ratchet. Everything else stays the same for us in regards to manufacturing. Trying to you know utilize all of our parts and pieces, and so we just had to make a new ratchet. We changed the programming and everything. And it was like, this thing could be real. Went and tested it, and you guys would be floored by how good this thing did. So, so let me get this straight. Yep. The guy takes Corey <laughs> one day, and the next day, y'all have a finished prototype. Working finished I would call prototype. it a finished working prototype that, that actually exceeded our expectations of what we were hoping for. So in all reality, <laughs> if that was nitrided and DLC coated. It would have done even better than what it did game like yeah it's ready and i literally ordered the material to start these into production within the next few weeks here we'll be selling them on the website we'll be offering them to all of our tool trucks all of our dealers everybody that is involved in trebus will know that the 15 16 so two sensor wrench is available so we're i mean i guess we're officially leaked aren't we like well you know like we go <laughs> into a lot of shops and we, we talk to a lot of technicians and we were out you know, using the O2 sensor wrench, like when we sell uh, the first batch of doing area, a lot of times we're there, we're working with the technicians. And on those new DPF filters, we run into 15, 16 sensors. And so everyone was asking for them. And we said, well, you know, we're really busy right now making what we're making now, but uh, we like to say yes. And uh, so this tool's gonna fit, uh, this tool's gonna fit into your toolbox. We're really excited about it, actually. Uh, Clay's pretty good at twisting our arms. And uh, Kendall's pretty good at making things happen. So we're excited for you guys. We're excited for us. I mean, we've got a lot of work to do, but uh, it's coming. And it's coming quick. So get ready and, uh, you know, Drew's Tools. Here we go. There you go. I like it. Well, guys, thank you all very much, you Kendall. Bet. I appreciate you giving me the time today to come down and, and Absolutely. visit with you guys and, and taking everybody on a tour and letting us see what's going on. Well, just watch for us to grow. That's the, that's what's next. You know, more machines, more people, more tools, more everything. That's what Trebus is all about. So we're excited. So if anybody needs anything, like always, guys, check out www.trebustools.com. Yep. If you like this video, thanks, Kendall, once again. Hit the thumbs up. Give Kendall some love because <laughs> he stayed late today. Like, who, what boss man stays late? <laughs> Over here is for the merchandise, cool tools, discount codes, and all that stuff. And if you're not subscribed, take your finger and click that subscribe button. Check out Trebus Tools on Instagram. You got a y'all got a YouTube channel, and yep, so do. go check out all their socials, Facebook. I'm sure they got every channel available. Maybe you'll even see Kendall dancing on TikTok one day. Oh snap! Watch <laughs> yourself. All right, guys, y'all be careful. Catch you next time.